Hey guys, it's Chris. Welcome back to my channel. Um, first off, I want to just say um, post, post, clink, clink, I can't talk. Uh, click right here and please enter the giveaway. Um, vendor sponsored giveaway. Um, this month is truly yours, Wax. We have vendors all the way through 2014. So every month, everybody's going to get a chance to enter a giveaway. Um, so I'm super duper excited about that. Today is the last day, you guys, to enter. Last day. So if you have um, have not entered yet, please click that button. Easy peasy, five minutes video just to give you the you know the the gist of how to enter. Really super duper easy. Um, and I hate oh it drives me crazy when my subbies are like oh I didn't get to enter. I've been announcing this all month in all my videos. The links have been on there. Please guys, please 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 enter. I'd hate for you to. Um, not be able to it's really easy and next i had originally said i was gonna let people enter through the 31st but i'm not only through the 30th that's the only change um because the 31st i have to pick a winner and there are quite a few entries so i have to go through and list everybody and then put them in classroomtools.net and i'll make sure that you've subscribed and you've liked the truly yours page and everything like that she's got a a bag of goodies for people so you know i mean it's a win-win situation it's awesome i'm so excited about this whole thing and the fact that i have people all the way through 2014. um okay uh, i want to apologize in advance if you hear my fan to my computer i unplugged the underneath fan part that i have but if you hear the fan to my computer i apologize i have to clean this sucker out i don't quite know what's going on but lately I, i've been hearing my fan i don't know if you guys have mm -hmm. if you do i apologize I'm sorry. Um, please bear with it. Um, so, um, what I am doing is I am doing a, I'm doing vendor spotlight videos. Now, these are people that have sent me wax for testing, and unfortunately, due to health reasons, I cannot test. I cannot test in the professional capacity. If you guys watch my how I test video um for vendors you will see it's quite in depth and lengthy and it's just something that i cannot do right now with being on bed rest having um um limitations put on me and it's kind of a 24 7 process and i'm kind of up and down you know some days i feel better some days i feel worse some days i do too much then i feel like caca and some days that I need to go to bed. It's just, it's just been really, really crazy. So, um, so instead I figured I'm going to do these vendor testings as soon as either A, they get all this stuff under control or B, I have surgery and after recovery, one of the two, these will be tested professionally. You guys will not see those videos. Those are strictly confidential. They are just for the vendor. If the vendor chooses then to release them, that's their business um, for promotional purposes. That's totally their business. Um, if they choose not to and just use my tips and tricks or whatever, their wax can be perfect. Who knows? Um, you know, whatever they choose to do with it is their business. Um, and that includes also tester sheets. So it's a lot. It There's a lot of steps in it. It really does take a lot. So, um, and for my new subbies, if you guys wonder, like, you know, oh, Chris tests wax. Well, let's see what she does. Check out my um, how I test video, and um, you guys will see exactly how in depth it is. So, you guys know that I'm not a tester that just throws something in and goes, oh yeah, that was good, or that was bad, or I didn't like that one, or that one didn't last very long. No, I mean I go from beginning to end. Um, from first smelling the tart to, you know, what, well, what warmer I've used to first smelling the tart to how long it's lasted on strong from, you know, hour to hour, how long it lasted on medium from hour to hour. So I am melting these tarts from beginning to like the dump period where like it's super light. I can no longer smell it anymore. So this really is 24 seven. And in the meantime, I don't get to melt a lot of my own stuff. So what I decided to do is instead of keeping all these people on hold, which they are on hold for the testing, I had posted that on my Facebook page and I believe in my Facebook group. Um, 
I'm going to do vendor spotlight. These are just going to be cold sniffs, my first impression kind of things, maybe some things that I see that could be changed, that kind of stuff that kind of just catches my eye. Um, so they can get some publicity and um, anyway, even though the wax isn't exactly being tested per se, um, I try to throw in one piece while I'm doing this video just so people can get an idea. Hopefully by the end of the video, I can smell something and they can get an idea of, you know, what I think. Um, but so I'm going to start off here and I don't think there's a card. Oh, maybe there is a card. There is a card in here. Okay. So now this is a vendor that I have not had good luck with from the beginning. It's a vendor I've worked very closely with. I love her to death as a person. I mean, I absolutely, nothing bad to say. She's super duper sweet. Really, really love her. Want her to succeed. Um, have gotten some stuff from the beginning. Not impressed. Um, but she wrote me a letter or a thank you note. And it says, thank you. Your kindness is special. And so are you. Thank you, Christine, for testing. This is KB Creations, guys. I don't have a card. Um, but I can show you a label. This is KB Creations. Um, and there is her Etsy store or store Envy. Excuse me. And <clears throat> I know she recently, she sent me this bag because she recently changed up her wax formulation. So, you know, when a vendor is not having good luck, it's kind of hard when you start off and you get bad reviews. Like people aren't smelling your wax. It's not throwing, whatever kind of thing. That's why I always say testing, testing, testing is so, so important. And I know a lot of people use their family and friends to test and swear that they're objective. And I really have to argue with that. Um, I think for the most part, family and friends do want you to succeed. So, and they don't want to hurt your feelings. So they're going to say, oh yeah, it's lovely. Not to say that not everybody, you know, has had that experience. I do know a few people who have bought from KB Creations before and have gotten good results. That's great for them. I'm super happy for them. That's awesome. Um, old wax formulation, I've melted in every single warmer that I have, and I have from a 14 watt up to all the way up to 24 watt and nothing. So, um, I did, I know she has changed some stuff out. I know at the beginning she was using the wrong cups. We discussed that. She changed her cups out kind of thing. Um, there were some issues and, you know, I'll discuss it throughout the video, but anyway, so this is, um, we'll start off with this one just because this was the first one that I grabbed. I do have one in my 20 watt, um, hot plate right now. Let me just check. Hold on. I want to make sure it's on. Yes, it is on. Is it melting yet? Yeah. It's melting a little bit and I'm not really smelling anything at this moment. Um, the thing with KB Creations is I always smell on cold. For the most part, on cold, I really get a really good cold sniff. When it comes to then warming it up, not so much. But she did change her wax formulation out in November. So she asked me if I would like to try some more. And I said, well, of course, you know, I mean, I want to give a good review and everything like that. Prefacing this by this is not a review video, you guys. Okay. It's not. I will tell you at the end if I'm smelling anything from this, you know, this tart. And again, this is my 20 watt blade warmer, um, which is kind of everyone's go-to at this point. Okay, so I do have some critiques just by looking at the first scent shot, but I will just let you know. Um, so this is in, this is KB Creations in pistachio pudding. And this is November, 2013. This is handwritten. Most of the stuff I've noticed from her labels is handwritten. November, wait, November 2000, hold on, yeah, 2013, this is when she changed up her wax formulation, and which I always think that's good, if, if you guys are not getting a, you know, good wax throw, and you've been open for a little while now, and the majority, I mean, you may have some people, like I said, love it, you know, think it's amazing, 
but the majority are not, you know, not getting good results. And that's the other thing too, guys, is this is just in general, not just for KB Creations, but for everybody. I really think it's so important. These vendors want to succeed. Um, are you going to get a vendor that you complain to or you have a critique about and you approach them with it and they just don't care? Of course you are. Um, some people just think their wax is wonderful, amazing, nothing wrong with it, and you're crazy. That's going to happen. Um, for the most part, what I have noticed, though, is that if you do approach that vendor, they will do whatever they can to um, make you happy. I mean, if they can't change anything as far as like wax formulation, obviously, you know, you can't change that overnight. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you know, they will usually offer a refund or whatever, or that kind of thing. So, you know, for the most part, I've noticed that vendors are super duper accommodate, accommodating and really nice. Um, now I'm also going to preface that by saying, don't take advantage. Okay. I mean, you know, if you get something and it's not necessarily your scent or, you know, I mean, it throws, it's just not super duper strong. You know what? That could also be the fragrance oil and it could be the scent that's just not super duper strong. Anytime you get something that's not your scent, pass it on. That's not a reason to contact a vendor and say, you know, and I'm not saying this has happened. I'm just saying in general that that's not a reason to contact a vendor and say, you know, oh, I want my money back because I don't like this scent. I mean, that's kind of a given. And I've been finding recently that, that vendors have actually had to post, you know, if you don't like the scent and especially like if it's a scent blend that you made or whatever, I'm not responsible for that. And that makes sense. They're not responsible for that. You blended it. That's what you wanted. You never really know what you're going to come up with until you get it. And, you know, it's kind of like trial and error. I recently did a couple scent blends and um, lows that I'm waiting on. And they may be wonderful. They may not be wonderful. That's not the wax vendor's fault. It's the scents that I picked. Maybe they don't go together. You know, maybe they sounded amazing in my head. And then I sniff it and go, Ugh, you know, not so good. Um, but, okay, so moving on to KB Creations. Now, this is Tester, like I said, Tester Wax. Um, so the first thing I'm going to notice, obviously, is the label. Um, some people, okay, these are all handwritten. Could be because it's tester wax. I do, I have noticed, though, on the majority of her stuff that I've ever gotten from her, handwritten. Um, I would suggest, since you are printing out this label anyway, print out the name just because it's, if you're like me and don't have the best handwriting, um, it just makes it look more professional, okay? And I'm not quite sure what this stuff is over here. I don't know what that is. If that's crayon or, <laughs> or food or oils, I don't know what it is. Um, it makes it look a little messy. Again, prefacing this by saying this is you know, just stuff she threw in a bag for me to, you know, try again. Um, so that's number one. Some people, um, I think in one of the groups we did a poll on, do you prefer like a, a label printed as long as, you know, if the wax throws for days, whatever. Most people put, they don't care about the label, the printing on the label, the handwriting on the label, as long as it's awesome wax and it throws for days. That's fine. Some people really like a hand printed label. That's fine too, you know? So, it, you know, does it affect your business one way or another? In my opinion, and in, well, for me, no, it doesn't. Um, obviously, I need to be able to read it. If I can't read it, well, then, you know, obviously there's a problem there. But if I can read it, is it really going to affect it? Probably not. The only thing that handwritten labels kind of reminds me of is de-stash wax. That's kind of what it reminds me of because, you know, when we de-stash wax or we do round robin wax, a lot of us, I mean, I have a label maker, but there have been times where I have handwritten the labels. So um, that's what it kind of reminds me of. It doesn't set it apart from someone who uses a nice fancy label. And you know, I mean, not even it doesn't even have to be super fancy, but just has it printed. It it you know you know that came from the original candle maker kind of thing. It's not somebody just throwing this you know um, 
just handwriting the label on like some of us do for round robins and de-stashes. You know, does it really bother me? No, like I said, I can, as long as I can smell it and everything, that's great. Uh, I'm just looking to see how this is going. This is melting, but it's it's cold in here too. So I'm, I'm not smelling anything yet. I'm wondering if I should throw this in my 24 watt. Yeah, as of right now, I'm not really smelling anything. And it's melting a little wonky. And I think it might be because it's so cold in here. Like I said, I do have my heat up to 75 degrees. But I know that the Glade Warmer is kind of the go-to for everybody. So, you know, I think... I don't want to say vendors should test in their Glade Warmer because... I personally don't love my Glade Warmer. I've been testing it more often. I like my 18 watt a lot, a lot better. But um, to me, when you test in a 24 watt warmer, that's not really a test because, and I'm sorry, this is not all about KB Creations here. This is just general, my general thoughts. I if If your wax does not throw in a 24 watt hot plate, then you have a dud, obviously. So do I find testing in a 24 watt to be accurate no i don't because you know anything's going to throw in a 24 watt for the most part you know unless it's just a total absolute dud wax um so you're not really not and not everybody has a 24 watt some people are just doing the glade warmers like i said so <laughs> I think the Glade Warmer is kind of, like I said, I don't love mine. 18 watt to me would be would be an ideal. That's where I that's what I do all my testing in. Um, it's kind of in the middle of the 14 watt to the 24 watt is the 18 watt. So if it throws in the 18 watt, you could probably get away with a four, you know, a lower wattage and a higher wattage, depending on the scent throw that you want and how long you want it to last. 24 watt to me is not a good test of, you know, if you say, oh, I tested a 24 watt, not a good test because anything's going to throw in a 24 watt. Like I said, unless it's an absolute complete dud. So, okay, and will it throw? Sure. But how long are you leaving that tart in to test? Are you leaving it in for 15 minutes and say, wow, yeah, it threw amazing. Okay, for 15 minutes, but, you know, how long did it throw amazing for, you know, in the 24 watt? Just, just again, just another one of my opinions. Okay, we'll move on to KB Creations. Okay, so this is in pistachio pudding. Like I said, first thing I noticed is the, um, the labels. Now, if you noticed here, and some, some people don't care about this either, um, the label is a little wrinkled. And it's very hard to put these labels on these square, flat, you know, these flat rectangular labels onto a curved surface. So what I would suggest, this is just me, is to create round labels and put them on the bottom. That way if the lid pops off, the person doesn't need to worry about the bottom. You know, it doesn't have to worry about the scent. It's it's on the bottom. It's all set kind of thing. It's along the same lines of, you know, putting it on the side. It just tends to look a lot neater and a lot nicer if you just put it on the bottom. Um, she does not have, she has pour date, which is awesome. So November 2013. Um, now, this is the problem with, that I've encountered with KB Creations is that, okay, November. So December, January, this stuff's cured, obviously, right? Okay, so you open it up and you have pretty hard wax. I believe she uses 100% soy. She has her sprinkles on top. They always seem to congregate in the middle. So I'm not quite sure when she's pouring this on, you know, the glitter. They always seem to congregate in the middle, which makes it look a little weird to me. I don't know. I Instead of it just being kind of sprinkled all around, you know, you have a line of glitter across here, and then you have everything in the middle. 
Um, the other thing I'm going to point out, and this is what really bothers me, this really, really bothers me, and this makes me nervous, is that if you look at the bottom of this cup, you see how white and chalky that is? I will tilt it so you can see, okay? So the wax up top is the normal color and like how it should be, and then every single scent shot cup that I've ever gotten from her at the bottom Everything falls to the bottom. I don't know if she used additives in her soy. I don't know if she does not use additives in her soy. I don't know what kind of soy she does use. This bothers me. I will pop this out. On cold sniff, this is pistachio pudding. It smells just like pistachio pudding. It smells amazing on cold. Amazing. When I pop it out, her wax is very hard to pop out also, by the way, guys. And I think what is happening is that whatever she's using is just absolutely sinking to the bottom and adhering to the bottom of the cup, which makes it very hard to, but you can see popped out. This is the texture of sort of like sidewalk chalk. I mean, that's the best kind of way I can say it. There is some glitter on the bottom, but it looks like everything has settled to the bottom. Um, and this looks really nice. When I melt something like this, I would probably cut this bottom off, but then as a consumer, are you losing the wax yes this bottom is not very hard this is more of a creamy consistency but i notice the more her wax sits the chalkier and harder the bottom gets and crumbly and all that kind of stuff so i don't know brooklyn if there is something you could put in your wax to make it creamier i don't know why this happens with your wax but even here we go with the new wax formulation, everything has dropped to the bottom. Um, I'm cold, smells amazing. Smells really good. I've never had an issue, well, I shouldn't say, the first wax, yes. You know, not much cold sniff after, after you cure. It's like I'm almost afraid to cure her stuff or her old stuff because that's how it would be. Okay, so what I have in the warmer right now, and it is melting, and I'm not smelling anything. Okay, wait, just give me a second because I just want to pull this warmer closer to me. Okay, it's slowly but surely melting. As you can see here in the Glade warmer, it's melting kind of funny. Now, putting my nose up to the bowl, it smells really nice. Not super strong, but it smells like honeysuckle because that's what's in there, because I'm not a floral person, and honeysuckle tends to be a strong scent. Um, it's not filling my room. It's not, I can't, I'm very close, as you can see, I'm very close to my warmer. Excuse the mess. That's my table. So <laughs> that's where my stuff goes. Um, but as you can see, I'm, I'm close to the warmer, and I'm not getting anything. Not smelling a thing. So, you know, um, most wax by this point will have thrown at, of, of some sort. I'd be able to smell it at least from here, you know, because I'm like, I can almost touch the warmer. So I don't know how long my arm is, but, you know, I could at least smell it from here. Um, and I'm not getting anything. So this is honeysuckle. Oh, my camera wants to be funny today. Okay, honeysuckle. And this again was poured in November. And like I said, on cold, smells really good. It smells amazing. I'm not a floral person, but honeysuckle. I wanted to try honeysuckle because I wanted to try kind of one of the, um, either a scent that I don't like because I know I could spot it right off as far as, you know, once it starts warming up. Or, um... One that's a little stronger, and florals tend to be a little stronger, um, in my opinion. So that's honeysuckle. So next is white chocolate macadamia. And this was poured in November. And again, see, um, here this has no sprinkles. I really prefer this with your wax, Brooklyn, because... Like I said, for some reason, when you put sprinkles in there, 
they all tend to fall to the bottom. Now there is pink. Okay, there is wax underneath the label. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's kind of messy. Be careful with that. And again, this is kind of little critiques that I would give you if I was doing a tester, a professional tester review. Um, I know everyone's like, well, it's tester wax, you know, okay, but don't you still want it to be good? You know, you want it to be professional and all that other stuff. Um, there is stuff that has sunk to the bottom. And again, this is white. You're not going to really be able to see it, but see these red dots that have sunk to the bottom. Not quite sure what those are. looks like some sort of dye, maybe. Just be careful as far as neatness goes. Um, and this also does have a ring on the bottom. You will be able to catch, be able to catch from the camera. If you look at the bottom, it's you can see the different consistency. Let me see if I can point it out. I should probably use my other hand. Starting here, there's a yellow tinge. And so you know you have the same bottom as you did with this one. You're not going to notice it as much only because this is a white wax. Now this is white chocolate macadamia. I don't get a lot from this. I'm going to be 100% honest. White chocolate is normally a scent that curls my nose. Like, I don't like white chocolate. But macadamia nut, I do like. I don't get much of anything here. <clears throat> I'm going to pop this out. Again, you do have sort of the chalky bottom, as you can see. And the bottom, it smells more, but this is a lighter scent, definitely. Um, so, and another thing I want to say, um, the pores are not all the way up to the top. They're a little messy, but, you know, I, I don't know. Some people love, I mean, some people are really super picky about that. Is her wax less expensive? Absolutely. I'm not saying her wax that she buys in general. I don't know what she pays for it. I don't even know what kind of wax she uses. But, um, you know, she does she post really good deals? Absolutely. Do you get what you pay for for the most part? Yes. You can see here, this is, I turned the sunshot cup over. This is a short pour. Okay. You got to make sure if you're selling two ounce scent shots or, you know, they come to 1.7 ounces, you're pouring enough for the person. You know, you don't want the person to feel gypped. Okay. This is a short pour. So look at all that room there. Short pour. Um, this one, I don't even know. Maybe I'll throw this one in my 24 watt. Um, the other thing I've noticed too, she is, she did change her cups. They are number five PPs. What I've noticed for the most part, the vendors that I really love that do scent check cups use the dart cups only like BZs. They use the dart, um, cups, which is number five PP and the dart lids, which are number five PP. These are number one P E T E's. Now I know a lot of vendors use these. And have no issues whatsoever. I kind of feel if your scent shot cup, you know, because people are like, well, the scent shot's not touching the top of the lid. Sure, but if you're going to take something and you're going to wrap, like, say, you might as well, say you wrap this in saran wrap. I mean, this number one PETE -E is not compatible with wax. So you might as well wrap this in saran wrap. Would you do that? No, you wouldn't. So, and again, this is not just KV Creations. This is what I've just been noticing. Um, use the dart cups and the dart lids. You know those are the right ones. They're number five PPs. Um, even the lids, because some vendors do fill all the way to the top. Some vendors add chunkies that touch the top. You know, um, and they add decorations that touch the top. Whatever the case may be. That's just my personal opinion, obviously. Vendor wise, you can use whatever you want to use as long as it's number five PP cup. For the most part, people will accept it. I'm finding that, you know, I, I'm noticing, especially when when someone pours it fully to the top, that it's not as 
smelly on the top as it does on the bottom. I also do know, I'm not a dodo, I do know that it has to do with, with gravity and everything falling to the bottom, which is why you always get a better smell on the bottom. Now, again, don't, don't know why. This is something I think has to be addressed, Brooklyn. I really do. Um, why that is. Why do your bottoms do that? Do you use some sort of additive? What is the case? I mean, you can look at the bottom. It's all chalky on the bottom too. Um, is it the type of wax you're using? Is it, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Maybe we can talk through it in private message and figure it out. But um, yours is really the only wax I've ever noticed that does that. And I'm going to be 100% honest. This is, actually, I probably throw, should have thrown this in. I didn't see it just because I don't like black cherry, but I should have because it's super strong. Um, but again, you throw a super strong scent in. Again, the bottom, you know, there's wax. I understand, like, you get wax on your hands or whatever. But the bottom of this label, no, I'm just pulling this up just so you can see. You know, there's some sort of dye or something on there. I know your hands get dirty. Wash them in between kind of thing. Just make sure it's okay. But you will notice with the black cherry too, see the bottom? It's absolutely white. And then you have the cherry. Um, and I'm always noticing some sort of residue of some sort. I'm going to turn it. There you go. See the black? I don't know. Like I said, again, I don't know if that's concentrated dye just sitting there. Really got to clean off your cups. Um, again, a short pour. Now, this black cherry, what's funny is black cherry normally blows me over. This one does not. From the top, her wax feels decent. You know, it's a little harder than most, but it's, you know, kind of creamy. It's, you know, it's, it's decent. Um, you pop this out. Ugh. It's very hard to pop out, but you pop it out. Look at the bottom. That's not... To me, that's really not sellable. It's really not something you should sell. I don't know what that is. I don't even know what it is. You know, normal frosting will frost also, will also be frosted on the top and all the way out. With yours, honey, it's just at the bottom, and I don't get it. And it's if you can see from the indents and everything, it's very, very chalky. I don't understand. Um, the black cherry on the bottom, super, you know, very, pretty, pretty strong. I'm not a, I'm not a black cherry person. I'm not a cherry person at all. Um, once I do a testing, I will, um, okay. This honeysuckle is almost melted in this 20 watt and I'm not getting anything, nothing at all. Um, the only thing that has not melted is the, is the bottom, the chalky bottom part. Again, hold my nose up to it. Smells very nice. As far as throw, not getting much. And, you know, if the answer is going to be only melt my wax in a 24 watt warmer, I think some things need to change. So that's all. Um, okay, next is sugar waffle cookie dough. And this is a number five PP, but it's a black cup. Um, okay, that doesn't solve your problem as far as the frosting on the bottom, but it does solve it in the sense of um, people not seeing it as readily by using the black cups. Um, these are solo, I believe these are solo cups. I have some of these myself. Let's see if I can, ugh, I'm getting wax all over the place. Ugh, super duper hard to, her wax is really hard to pop out of the cups. Um, whatever was, you know, if she had sprinkles or something or glitter or something, it's all on the bottom. I don't know what that is. Maybe it's cinnamon. No idea. It smells kind of cinnamony, so it might be cinnamon. Sugar waffle cookie dough. This is giving me a really weird... 
scent. Um, can't sm top smells like nothing. Everything that's settled to the bottom smells, um, but doesn't smell like cookie dough. A little bit of cinnamon, but that's kind of it. It kind of has a little after smell. Oh my God, I have to clean myself and my keyboard off. Um, you know what I'm thinking? This is just a thought, is that when you are stirring your wax, you're not stirring enough. You're not stirring enough for your fragrance oils and everything to bond to your wax. That's just a thought. I could be absolutely 100% wrong, but that may be why everything is dropping to the bottom of these. Um, next is, I am not going to be able to, even when I do test, to test every single one of these fragrances. It's more about testing your wax, not about testing your fragrances. Um, this popped off. This was in buttercream. I'm assuming, unless there's other pop-offs in here. Oh, there are. No, nope. are there? Are there not? Hold on a second. No, they're not. Okay. This was in buttercream. Um, I don't know why it's red, but okay. It's in buttercream. And, um, this label had popped, this, this lid had popped off. So that's kind of what I'm saying is that once the lids pop off and they're labeled on the lids, if another label had popped off, would I have known this was buttercream? Never in a million years. Buttercream does not normally come in a red wax. It's fine. You want to switch up the waxes. I mean, who says buttercream has to be red? Nobody. This smells like buttercream. If you look at the consistency, though, I don't know quite what is with the hollowing going through. Um, I noticed that in another one. It's quite frosty on the top. Um, this one doesn't have as much of that demarcation on the bottom. Mm. Let me just see if I can pop this out without making it a huge mess. There we go. This one looks better on the bottom, I'll be 100% honest. Looks much better on the bottom. I mean, a little bit of frosting, but not compared to the other ones that you saw. And it smells like buttercream. Buttercream is a very, very light scent. Um buttercream is usually a mixer in my my eyes is a mixer will I put this in my 24 watt yes I will um knowing it's a lighter scent this one is a lollipop lane and again this is what's happening I think you're either putting putting some stuff in too early or you're stirring at the wrong temperature, or you're stirring, not stirring enough. She put cute little um, sprinkles, or, you know, these, I forget they call them, non perials or whatever, on the bottom. And they've all, I mean, on the, what was supposed to be the top, I'm pretty positive. Why would you really put something on the bottom? And they've all melted to, I mean, they've all sunk to the bottom, and you can see the color difference. So, there's something going on. This is a wonderful fragrance. Again, on cold, it's it's a it's a light, light to light to. No, I'm not even gonna say light to medium. It's a it's a light it's a light scent. Um, which for a lollipop, I'd expect it to be more. I'd expect it to be not light. Ugh. Um. I'm starting to think because also that it takes, it's so hard to release your wax that it's, it's your wax. It's the type of wax you're using. But if you look at the bottom of this, again, you have the frostiness. Everything is sunk to the bottom, including the decorations. Um, on the bottom, it smells a lot, a lot. It's more of a medium. It's a soft medium, but it's more of a medium um, the cold sniff. Um, really nice scent. Really, really nice scent. 
I'm just not quite sure what's going on with the with the bottom. Um, she also sent me. She was very super generous, you guys, with sending me stuff. Um, this is banana cream pie. These are all from November. And again, I know she's still learning. And that's why we had talked when she first started out. And she did take my suggestions, which was awesome. Um, the ones that I could give her. Um, I don't know if any vendors can post on this. And um, oh, this smells really good, guys. Banana cream pie. It smells really good. Again, it's, you know, it's light. It's a, it's a lighter you know, or light to medium, whatever, on cold snip, which is fine. You know, cold snip does not always have to be super duper. Um, when you smell nothing and then you melt and smell nothing, that's kind of different. But again, on the bottom, this you can definitely see the difference. See it, guys? The white ring and the bottom is chalkier than the top. If anybody could post below and just give some suggestions to Brooklyn as to how to change this, that would be amazing. It really would because I'm not a candle maker. I don't quite know what's happening, but every single one is like that for the most part, um, except for one, I think. Okay, so then we have Monkey Farts. And again, this is a short pour. I can just tell by looking at it. Um, all the sprinkles, everything has fallen to the bottom. I mean, I'm not going to say that anymore, guys, because that's just how it is. That's just the case. Um, but all the sprinkles are in the middle, too. So that really makes me think of that's how she's, when she's putting it in, in the sprinkles. That she's putting it in too early and it's all pooling into the middle. This is nice. Monkey Farts is not a huge... I have wax all over the place. Not a huge, um, not a very strong scent, but it's, but this smells very nice. I smell tropical. I smell melon. It's very nice. Um, let me see. Next is fresh coffee and it is pink. <laughs> so not what I would expect. Um, again, you can see on the bottom here, see that frosting, but it's more than, it's more than the normal frosting you see. Um, there is some frosting on top. That's kind of normal with hundred percent soy wax. Um, I know there's a way that you can, um, kind of prohibit that, get rid of that. I know there's different waxes that soy wax that don't um, really frost as much, maybe look into that. Um, now this is a really, not, okay, this is, see, this is blowing me away. And this is what I'm saying. The girl's got some talent going on here. I'm not saying she doesn't because this fresh coffee is really nice. It is, I have been looking for a fresh coffee and this, Smells really good. I don't know what fragrance oil you've used, Brooklyn, but I may need to get that info from you. She's got a really nice fresh coffee. It smells really good. It's not that caca coffee. It's really, really good. But again, if I throw it in the warmer or I only have to melt it in my 25 watt or my 24 watt hot plate and only throws for a couple hours, to me, that's still a dud tart. Not saying that that's what's going to happen with these. The honeysuckle is all the way melted, guys. And I can barely smell it. Barely, barely. Like every once in a while, I'm sorry, you guys have to look at up my nose. I just wanted to really close my eyes and kind of get a gist here. Um, every once in a while, I might get a whiff here and there. Um, hopefully by the end of the video, there will be more of a throw. Um, she also sent me, so you guys know, another bag. <laughs> sent me two bags. Um, and what I had noticed 
Oh, good. I'm able to open it. I was like, I can't open this bag. Okay, so here's another scent shot. Oh, this is the older wax. This is a question mark. Um, and again, you know, I know she's sending me stuff just to just for the wax purposes, but you see the that looks like fragrance. Actually, it looks like magic marker to be honest with you, but it looks or crayon. I don't know what that is. Would you send that to somebody? No. I mean, you know, I know this is for testing purposes. This is some sort of bakery scent. And again, on cold, I've never had an issue, for the most part, on cold. If I let it cure for quite a while, then I do. I'm going to pop this out so you guys can see the bottom of her older wax. No. See, this is the problem is I can't even pop out her older wax. Oh, there we go. I can pop out her newer wax, but it's super duper hard. But this is this was super, super duper hard. Again, it's white, so you're not going to be able to see too much. But can you see the how um, everything's gone to the bottom? And it's very, I want to call it chalky, sidewalk chalky. This is, a, this is a nice scent. This is kind of like a citrus bakery, or not citrus, like fruity bakery kind of scent. But I didn't have any luck with her older wax. And she did label this November 2013 with her newer labels, but that's okay. She wrote older wax, so now I know. Okay, here is an example of a clamshell. Now, I love this idea, okay? She uses these big, huge clamshells. These are one ounce a piece. These jumbo clamshells. The problem is, if you look, poured way too hot. Look, look at how the clamshell is melting. Poured way, 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 way too hot. You don't want to send people this. This is blueberry ice cream cone. Um, you know, you really don't want to send people something like this. This, I love this idea of the jumbos. I would definitely purchase the jumbos. I will not, I don't like regular clamshells, not enough wax for me, but definitely purchase the jumbos. Love this idea. Um, but all the wax cubes are, is that wax on the outside? There's wax on the outside. There's kind of wax all over. This part is kind of mutilated. I think the, just the whole bottom got, from pouring too hot, it got messed up. Let me see if it focuses. There you go. You can see it over. You can see it over here. You can see see over here, here, over here. Pour. I think I believe this was poured too hot, and you melted the bottom of the the sun shot. Um, this is blueberry ice cream cone. Definitely smell the ice cream. Um, scent, not so much the blueberry. I do not want to pop this because it's going to be very messy at this moment, but I love the idea of the jumbo cups. Brooklyn, you just need to pour it at the right temperature. This was poured way too hot. You melted the, the bottom. Um, that may cause a plasticky smell in your wax. Don't know for sure. We'll have to melt it to find out. Um, now here are her shapes. And again, even with her shapes, this is Grandma Zucchini Bread. This is a scallop. Okay. Um, she uses her labels to keep her stuff shut. I don't really like that at all because if I wanted to pass this on and let somebody else enjoy it, I've opened it now, kind of broken the seal. Get resealable cello bags. They're, they're super cheap. In the clear has them or Ziplocs, really super cheap, probably cheaper than you got these for. Um, this is a huge scallop, very frosty. It smells wonderful on cold. It smells absolutely wonderful on cold. Um, but again, the bottom, 
I don't know if you're gonna be able to catch this. Let me try and hold it this way. The bottom, look at, see how cr how crumbly and chalky the bottom is compared to the rest of the wax. Don't know why that's happening. Vendors, please help. Please post below what your ideas are um, on how she could improve this because I really, really, really want Brooklyn to succeed. I love this girl. I think she is so super sweet. She never has a bad word to say about anybody. And I just, I really do want her to succeed. And, you know, in order to succeed, Brooklyn, I think your stuff needs to look better. Your stuff, I mean, if it means leaving sprinkles off, leave sprinkles off. I don't know what this is. I don't know if your son got into this with a magic marker or if this is, if this is, um, dye. I don't know what this is, but you don't send this to customers. I mean, obviously I'm not a customer. I'm, I'm testing. Um, the fact that all your stuff is, is chalk on the bottom, everything, um, settles to the bottom. Um, I've seen it, but not to the extent of your wax. Okay. This is buttermilk, buttermint, and this is older. She writes older right on it. You know, this is obviously, I mean, the bag's not even, you know, I mean, you know, especially knowing I'm going to test and stuff, I don't know if you would send stuff that way, but this has a nice minty. I don't know if it's a not necessarily a butter mint, but these are like kind of four little, they look like bananas kind of to me. Um, um, I get a mint, but I get a very waxy mint smell to this. Um, but this is the older wax to compare. And I know that's why she did it was to compare. I am going to take this label off and use it to stick this on because, oh, that's why it didn't work. Cause this label isn't working, but anyway, so, um, Okay, pouring stuff too hot, ruining your clamshells. Love this idea, but as again, as you can see, the clamshell is all ruined. It's all, you know, dented and bubbly and whatever. That's from pouring way too hot into your clamshell mold. Um, it has also warped this side. Very, very messy. Um... I would leave the glitter out altogether, Brooklyn, to be honest with you. Just leave it out because it's not doing anything for the look of your wax. So if it's not doing anything for the look of your wax, just leave it out. It's, 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 you know, it's just all kind of conglomerating into one area or one pattern of some sort. And it, it's just not doing anything. Um, okay. So this honeysuckle from, I guess again, an arm's length away. I'm really not smelling it, guys. It's been 53 minutes. This video has been 53 minutes long. I'm not. And when I hold it up, again, I'll hold it up. This plate, this it warmer is nice and hot. It smells wonderful. But who wants to, who's going to do this? You know, um, nobody. It smells wonderful, warmed up, but um, in the bowl, if I put my nose to it, but nobody's going to do that. Um, very little to no cold throw, uh, to warm throw, I mean. Um, lo again, love this idea. Poured too hot, melted the clamshell. Can't send it out like that. Leave the glitter off just makes it messier. And if anybody could please, 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 please. I put these all away, but I'm going to pull one out just so you can see. Um, any vendors, please help Brooklyn. Give her some ideas. Private message her as to why this is happening. Why is everything sinking to the bottom? Why is this, is there always a big white ring on the bottom of chalk with chalkier wax 
please help her out, guys. Because, you know, like I said, I, I really love this girl. And I really do want her to succeed. And she does have some really good deals. Um, so, anyway, that is sort of my warm and cold review, guys. Um, but it's my vendor spotlight review. But that honeysuckle just really did not do anything. God, I can't, I can't even, like, say I can smell it cold. Because I really can't. And that's an arm's length. I mean, again, as you can see, there's my warmer. It's, an, it's you know, an arm's, way, arm's length away and I can't smell it. And if I do smell it, it's super duper duper light. Um, once I do do her testing, I will melt all of these scents. Um, I may not melt all of them because like I've been telling people recently is, Please don't send me um, a ton of scents like that because it just takes more time. What you need, you don't need to be more concerned about what scents throw good because, you know, they all should throw good. You you need to be more concerned about your wax and is your wax throwing good. In this case, it's not. So anyway, that's all. Vendor Spotlight, um, KB Creations, enter my giveaway, guys. And um, please, vendors, please, my vendor friends, my subby vendor friends, please post below if you have any ideas for Brooklyn, you know, mess either post below, message her, whatever kind of thing. I really want this girl to succeed. I really do. I love her. I've been with her from beginning to now. I really, like, we've been talking back and forth, really, really, really want to come to the, get to the bottom of this. So thanks, guys. Take care.